Hi there, I'm Zach Kircher, and you're watching Kircher Talks Entertainment. I bet you clicked on this video expecting me to say something like, Star Wars is dead to me, I hate Star Wars, or Star Wars is awful and woke now. And no, that's not how I feel. I don't... I don't believe it. That is why you fail. In fact, everything I'm gonna say in this video will be motivated by a genuine love for this franchise. I fell in love with the original trilogy as a kid, I have Lego models hanging on shelves above my desk. Even as a grown man, I've experienced some of my favorite Star Wars stories for the first time within the past few years. Thinking about Star Wars on a deeper, critical level has also taught me some of my most important lessons when it comes to reviewing media. To assert, then, that I just don't care about Star Wars is silly, but that doesn't excuse the fact that I took the shameless clickbait route with my thumbnail and title. So, what exactly do I mean when I say that you should learn to let go of Star Wars? Well, that's why you clicked on this video, right? To hear me talk about that? Because you were nice enough to stick around this long already, I'll tell you. Let's get started, and may the Force be with us. So I think most people would tend to agree that Star Wars doesn't feel anywhere near as special as it once did. I know I feel that way. But if you were to summarize this whole entire video that I'm about to make here, it's that Star Wars fans are a hyperbolic bunch, and the never-ending war between toxic fans and the people who produce Star Wars content for Disney are causing this franchise to eat itself alive. This constant cycle of immensely overblown discourse around mostly inconsequential movies and TV shows has just taken the fun out of Star Wars for me. I mean, clearly I can still have some fun with Star Wars, since you're watching me play Battlefront 2 as the background footage while I yap to a microphone. However, I can't ignore this feeling that this series has sort of lost its luster for me, and I know I'm not alone in feeling that. The thing is, though, is that these problems are not new ones. The people who were raised on the prequels and shows like The Clone Wars and Rebels are only just now starting to get more cynical. That's how it was for older fans who grew up thinking the prequels are crap. What is wrong with your face? The sad truth is that this franchise has always been plagued by corporate greed and bad faith criticism from fans. The difference is, is that nowadays, compared to say even 25 years ago when The Phantom Menace came out, overwhelmingly negative sentiment about Star Wars has become much more vocal than it ever has before. Social media has given everyone a voice, and because we all have free speech, anyone has a platform to say pretty much anything that they want without socio-political repercussions, unless they incite actual violence, or they simply violate a website's terms of service. What happened to Ahmed Best as a result of his performance as Jar Jar Binks is despicable, but even that is a far cry from the racism and bigotry that people like Daisy Ridley and Kelly Marie Tran faced on social media for their work on the sequels. To give a personal example, I do not like the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, and I do not care for the character of Reva as she was written, but I would never go so far as to bully actress Moses Ingram and say she has no part in the Star Wars universe because of her ethnicity. That is absolutely absolutely repugnant behavior, and it continues to be part of the conversation. The Acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland, who has stated in interviews that her experiences as a lesbian informed her development of the series, has also been a subject of targeted, vitriolic comments. Now, the fact that she worked as an assistant for the Weinsteins is one thing, and that kind of factors into it, but otherwise, valid media criticism and cyberbullying are polar opposite things from one another, where one is a healthy part of discussing art, and the other has no place in our society. The unfortunate thing is that while there are tons of earnest, well-meaning fans who just want good media based in the galaxy far, far away, I happen to be one of those people, that segment of the fan base is thrown under the bus by those who shout from the rooftops that the latest show from Disney is the worst thing to ever happen, <laughs> and indicative of some like, hidden agenda to corrupt our children. He poisoned our water supply, burned our crops, and delivered a plague onto our houses! Her voices are so loud and boisterous. So much so to the point that people who dislike Star Wars on principle, they have more reason to harbor disdain for it, you know what I mean? Moreover, Disney has no real incentive to improve their shows on Disney+, Plus, because all of the publicity, however positive or negative it might be, draws attention to that content. It's the Streisand effect in action. The more you tell people to avoid something, 
naturally that's just going to feed into someone's curiosity of the thing. Hate watching, for example, is a real trend where people will watch a movie or a show not just to confirm bad word of mouth, but also with the pre-planned intention of crapping on it. YouTubers watching such content for their job is essentially another form of that. If everyone else is propagating a negative trend, might as well farm clicks and boast ad revenue, am I right? And that's not even mentioning that intense criticism towards plot holes and characters of differing genders and racial identities has likely resulted in Lucasfilm management not taking criticism of their work seriously. Just look at the rise of Skywalker as an example. Instead of actually applying legitimate criticisms of The Last Jedi and making a better story with them, the rise of Skywalker is just chock full of stupid, cringe-inducing nods to superficial gripes people had with The Last Jedi. Even as an apologist of The Last Jedi, I recognize that there is a lot you can criticize it for. But don't try to use its sequel as a petty means of retconning and fixing the movie that the audience rejected. I mean, for goodness sake, there is literally a line where Dominic Monaghan's resistance trooper references Admiral Holdo's desperate sacrifice as, and I quote, the Holdo maneuver, as if J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio plucked that term straight from Reddit when they wrote the script. We need to put some Holdo maneuvers, do some real damage. Come on, that move is one in a million. That's not screenwriting. That's called pandering to the lowest common denominator. And therein lies the smoking gun. When it comes to content on YouTube, particularly reviews and video essays, the algorithm favors videos that have a perceived negative angle because that catches everyone's attention. As such, the top videos will most likely continue to be those which nitpick totally insignificant issues in the grand scheme of things, as well as making the argument that Disney Star Wars is the worst thing that has and ever will happen. Even for those who are more level-headed Star Wars fans, it's not an uncommon belief that Star Wars is in a bad place right now, so those people will click on those videos if they see eye-catching thumbnails and titles. Therefore, Disney executives, if they even care about people complaining on YouTube to begin with, <laughs> they'll probably see these videos, laugh them off, and continue to perceive the Star Wars fandom as, like, a cesspool of battery acid, you know? They'll continue to make the content they think will gel with the broadest audience possible, while also satisfying their DEI obligations to shareholders. The community will say their piece about all of this, and then the cycle is just gonna keep on repeating. And don't even get me started on how seemingly more than any media franchise out there, Star Wars is a breeding ground for the most mind-numbingly bad faith political arguments you could imagine. Saying something positive or negative about Star Wars might result in you being accused of following one political ideology or another. Can you see why all of this would be exhausting? Star Wars itself as a brand will suffer under the weight of this never-ending, exhausting discourse. But enough of my time has been spent establishing context. Now that I've done that, do I have any potential solutions for all of this? As far as the discourse around Star Wars is concerned, I don't think anything will change there. The fandom is just hooked at this point. People who feed on negativity and fear-mongering, regardless of the truthfulness of their statements, will continue to profit off their grift. Tons of people will continue to write think pieces about how the newest Star Wars show that hasn't even come out yet is going to prove everyone wrong and expose bigots for who they are. And then Disney will just keep on spinning the content creation conveyor belt so long as the shows keep people subscribed to their streaming service, the movies generate profits from ticket sales, and interest is maintained in the merchandise and park experiences centered around Star Wars. But imagine this, what would happen if the average person just stopped watching new Star Wars content? Would it really be so hard to, as the title of my video suggests, let go of Star Wars? No, it really wouldn't be, and I'll tell you why. Now, understand that I'm not suggesting you forego Star Wars completely. Last year, for instance, I had an opportunity to go see A New Hope at an outdoor screening. A local movie theater projected it onto an inflatable screen that they set up on the top of their parking structure, and then they offered beach chair seating and headsets for each of the guests to use. I took my mom to that, and we had an awesome experience. It's stuff like that that should be cherished. 
And I think that you still should hold on to those movies, video games, or whatever else you enjoy. However, I do think that a lot of Star Wars fans need to recognize that there is plenty of media that they could be experiencing that is outside the realm of Star Wars. Or other big blockbuster franchises for that matter. There's a line you really have to draw for yourself when it comes to any fandom. At what point does your frustration with a franchise become so strong that it affects your mental and emotional health, you know? Why waste so much of your time and energy being upset at the state of Star Wars when you can just find something else to be invested in? Getting worked up over Star Wars, it's not worth it. It just isn't. I don't want to pull out the whole <laughs> there are starving children in Africa thing, but really, like, obsessing over the modern state of a media franchise, it's just pointless. It's just not worth it in an age where franchises are valued by corporations as little more than ways to mine revenue from sheepish consumers. If people keep coming back to watch the next installment, the story will never end. But that's the thing, though. If the audience stops watching, that forces a media company to do one of two things. The first possible outcome is that they will stop investing money into future projects and likely sell off the media rights to some other company. The other is that they will be compelled to make something so good that word of mouth will, at least in theory, convince the general public that they have to pay money to see it. But again, that can only happen if the average consumer chooses to ignore that which doesn't interest them. Understand this, you must not feel like you have to watch something just because it's a property that you had some fondness for in the past. If you're bored of seeing everything getting sequels, prequels, spin-offs, remakes, whatever, regardless if it's even in the Star Wars franchise, vote with your wallet. And even more, you don't have to lock yourself down to devoting your time to one or even two fandoms. Go outside of your comfort zone and try something new. As far as movies are concerned, go look up what's playing over the next few weeks and give at least one of those movies a chance. The only reason people think there are quote-unquote no good movies anymore is because people have forgotten how to give less publicized movies a chance when they come along. Or if not that, perhaps you can find a new TV show to be invested in. Maybe you've been meaning to get into some other sci-fi series like Star Trek, Firefly, Farscape, Battlestar Galactica, something like that. Another option is to try to find a video game that seems fun and interesting to you, particularly one that might have a lengthy story to it and keep, could keep you invested over many hours. Or maybe it doesn't even have to be related to, you know, visual media. You can lose yourself to a great book. You can go join a tabletop role-playing game group, especially one that is Star Wars related. Or you can start a new hobby. Do literally anything that brings you joy, as opposed to something that has diminishing returns the more you spend time on it. This is something that I try to maintain in my own life, and not just specifically for Star Wars. I've made a commitment to myself that if something doesn't interest me, I won't invest my money, and more importantly, my time. Time is too precious of a resource to use up on something that will not give you much in return. And that's essentially how Star Wars feels to me nowadays, at least modern Star Wars. There have been some genuinely great Star Wars projects in recent memory like Andor, but otherwise, like most of the other shows and movies, pale in comparison to the overwhelming amount of mediocrity that has plagued this franchise for years. It just doesn't hold the same interest for me that it used to. When I look at this whole list of projects and development on Wikipedia, that doesn't get me excited. It just makes me feel drained. Star Wars has not had a clear path ever since Disney purchased the franchise from George Lucas back in 2012, and it seems like that isn't going to change anytime soon. And that all ties back to my main point. Star Wars is not going to change for the better until the average consumer puts their foot down and decisively says no. And I'm not just talking about people who will turn on a camera and share their honest thoughts on YouTube. I'm referring to the regular average Joe who works a 9 to 5 job, goes home to make dinner, and then switches on Netflix. I have enough self-awareness to know that continually talking about Star Wars on the internet is going to keep the franchise somewhat relevant in the public consciousness, but it seems like many other fans don't. Well, either that, or some people have tied their online identity so closely to Star Wars 
that they're desperate to stay relevant themselves as the franchise continues to decline. So, as a result of all of that, I am simply going to distance myself from Star Wars. Am I still going to play older Star Wars games, rewatch the movies and shows I enjoy, and perhaps read some of the beloved novels? Yeah, of course I am. Perhaps if something genuinely amazing comes out of Star Wars, then maybe I'll make a video about it. I'm not ruling out that possibility. There are just so many other interesting movies, shows, and video games from years past that I would prefer to discover instead of keeping myself chained down to franchises of or every single new thing that comes out. I don't just want to discover them for myself either. I want to experience them, those older things, along with all of you. That's why I make videos like my I Have Never Seen series and make videos about movies that don't really get talked about by other YouTubers within this space. It's my hope that you will understand why I made this decision to walk away from Star Wars, at least, you know, here on YouTube, and that the videos I make in the future will be just as fun as insightful for you as I'm sure they will be for me. And that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching as always. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For doing so really does help me out. And I will see you all in the next one.